What's happening everyone? My name is Phil with Think Bank Do, and today we are installing some window blinds. Now, these are not the best quality windows in the world, so spending a lot of money on a window treatment doesn't really seem to make that much sense. When we quoted for window blinds, for, for custom blinds essentially, we were getting around $200, $250 at minimum per window. Right. That's because these are some odd sizes. This is a 96 by, I don't know, 32, no, 24. So eight foot by two foot window, which is typically custom size only. Um, and it was a bit too expensive. Even the cheapest roller blinds or I don't know, other kind of blinds there were, but the cheapest ones were about 250 bucks for this particular window. So we decided we would go with some Ikea blinds off of a friend's recommendation. So we have these, triple balls, which are um, cell, I don't know what you call them. Well, they look like cells and you pull them down or you push them up and they are $50 each for 48 inch blinds. So that puts our total cost at 100 bucks. Now, we are fortunate, and then this window is 96, and these are exactly 48. So two of these will line up perfectly, and they will part in the middle, right where the window splits on the two panes. That may not be the case for some of our other windows, but the good thing is, these you can adjust and cut to size, maybe about three to four inches. If you look inside here, you'll notice the hardware ends about four inches away from the end itself. So you can cut this down uh, maybe about three inches on each side. So that gives us some flexibility. There are other windows in this house that won't match up exactly the way we want them to. And I will end up cutting them uh, to fit within the inside of the window frame. Uh, when I get to that part, I will show you. For this window, we're gonna start off. We don't need to do that. Um, I actually found out you could do that online on some other YouTube videos showing you how to do it, which is very fortunate uh, because prior to that, I thought window blinds had to be custom ordered and you couldn't modify them yourself. That couldn't be any farther from the truth. So let's get these ones installed. Okay, if you wanted to see us cutting this cellulose blind, then you're in luck because ah, it's like three sixteenths of an inch too long for them to fit perfectly side by side, maybe even an eighth of an inch. These plastic clips on the end are preventing the two blinds from sitting perfectly next to each other. That being said, there probably needs to be some separation between these two uh, for the best uh, performance so they don't run into each other and so these edges don't fray against each other when you're pulling them down anyway. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut, we'll go with a quarter inch to start on just one of the blinds. It's not gonna be perfectly even but um, I think a quarter inch is the minimum I need to make a straight cut here and not fray the edges too much uh, or else it's gonna look a little bit ugly. So given that, uh, we're gonna remove the plastic hardware on the bottom here. This thing can slide forward some, if you look. Um, I'm sure there's some things I need to do to slide it. Slide it uh, yeah, it does move. Um, but you have to cut the metal with a different tool than you cut the cellulose. So I brought a kitchen knife and a butter knife or bread knife to make a straight cut on this cellulose edge. And then we'll use a regular hacksaw uh, on the aluminum parts here and here, whatever metal this is. So we'll do that. So cutting that wasn't exactly the easiest thing I've ever done. It's kind of ugly. I don't exactly have the right tools. 
The cellulose portion, however, did cut decently with the, I think it was a bread knife. So I'll do that again, but I think I might transfer to a, um, not a reciprocating saw, but a, a cutting blade to cut the aluminum because my oscillating tool um, did not work very well. And man, my hand is numb at this point. But if we throw this thing on, Okay. Now, obviously this is the ugly side. The ugly side we're gonna put into the corner so no one can see it. But when we do that, look at that, it fits. So a quarter of it is, I installed each of these clips flush against the, uh, the window frame, four inches on center from the ends, just so there'd be some uniformity. I think, you know, you, you can see it right there where, because they're so close together, they may fray and give it a couple of years of use. And this middle section here is going to get a little gummed up. Uh, that's okay because they're hundred dollar blondes and they're easily replaceable. So, they're also blackout, which is nice. So I just need to do that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more times. Let's get to work. So something I just found that I think might actually be pretty important is I'm cutting about two and a quarter inches back on this particular blind. And what I found is there is a metal weight that's been double-sided taped here um, that I was trying to cut through. Now, instead of cutting through this, I pulled this back and I sliced through the double-sided sticky tape. And I'm gonna put some silicone glue here and then just place it further back and then reinsert it. And that way the full weight is still there. It's gonna actually go like this. And it'll kind of preserve the integrity of how this thing goes up and down. The weight and the tension will be correct. Um, so I think that's just a better use of this piece. So I'm just gonna clean off the uh, double-sided tape here, get a dab of silicone, put that in. Now you'll notice I also put some painter's tape around the frame of this and that's because my work surface all the debris on it is scratching the surface of the metal and it's not the best finish so i just want to preserve it as best as i can um, so that's why i'm doing it So remember when I reattached the metal weight and it was on this side? I don't actually think that's where it's supposed to go. I think that's an IKEA manufacturing defect because the weight should actually be centered to the blind. So let's check this out. Yeah. I'm going to reposition the weight here since this silicone hasn't dried completely. Come on, baby. There you go. Because in the other blind, when I removed it, the weight was in the center, which makes a lot more sense. I thought there were two weights. There's actually only one. So let's make sure that goes in the middle here. So this is 36. So the middle is 18, just about. All right, so somewhere like here. Now, 
because I was noticing that one side of this was drooping. Didn't quite understand why. And then I realized it's more than likely because of the weight. Now I can take this silicone here to make sure it doesn't interfere with me sliding this thing around in the future. I can put some tape there. Since I can't clean it up, I'll just make sure that the silicone doesn't catch on anything. Slide this back over. Put our stopper in. All right. And now let's reattach. Handles go in the middle. So this is 36, so 18. Does not need to be perfect at all. Not bad. Now let's talk about drawbacks, right? Obviously this is a much cheaper system than doing a full custom blind. Custom blind would have gone a full 72 across without this sliver in the middle. Now obviously light is going to go through here. It'll be a little annoying, um, but for these in particular, these are the 36 inch blinds. I think these are 40 bucks. So for $80, you get two self-adjusting curtains um, at a decent price. I don't know if you can beat that when it comes to a custom blind, which would be about 200 bucks. So you decide. Let me know in the comments what you think is the right thing to do.
All right, so we are done with the blinds throughout the house. Um, each one was actually a little bit different. So, like I said, you'll notice these larger windows, these are 76 by 70 something, almost squares. And I bought a 38, 38 inch blind and then cut these back about an inch and a half on each one, to get them to come kind of make a good fit. And that's pretty good. Um, no issues on this one, but I'll show you. On this one, we did have an issue and I'll show it to you. Okay. So after I had already measured where I was going to cut on this piece, you'll notice for whatever reason, this blind, 38 inch blind, the track starts all the way up here. Whereas normally the track starts somewhere down here, which allows me that extra three, four inches of cutting space to adjust the blind. Don't know why this one came like this. Everything else had about a four inch gap from the end cap over, which meant I had accidentally already used a pen to mark off where I was going to cut this. So this window in particular is the only one that doesn't have an exactly center part for the window. Now that would have been a bigger deal if this thing had a separation in the windows in the middle, like the bedroom windows, but these living room windows are one third or some kind of odd paneling, like 20%, 20% and then 60% is doesn't move in the middle. Whatever, you get what I mean. So I tried to remove this with some alcohol or the, uh, the plumbing cleaner. That did not work at all. Uh, for now, I'm just putting some tape over it so it's less noticeable. Uh, and then we are hanging them back up and I don't care. You can judge me all you want. That's how it's going That is all for my do-it-yourself custom windows. Let me know what you think. Comments below. Like if you like the video.